Good morning guys, what is up? I hope you're all having an amazing day and welcome to the videos. Today is something that I have wanted to install in this car for a, oh, for such a long time. If you guys remember a couple of years ago, this thing was straight pipe and it was disgusting. But there has been a part that I've been wanting to get for this car for such a long time and that is a trigger kit. And here are the reasons why. So on the RB25s, one point of failure for the whole trigger setup, if you're experiencing issues with like, let's say cold start or something's misfiring or something along those lines, and I know for a fact that all the coil packs are working because up high they all fire absolutely perfectly, the spark plugs, nothing misfires, nothing is anything. Plus I've individually tested each one of them on the link system, so I know they're okay. However, the CAS is the only thing that I haven't changed on this car. Now for a number of months, I have been experiencing some really bad cold start issues and to the point where basically if it's cold and I start it up with one key turnover usually if I prime it three times or so it'll turn over no worries at all but when it comes to like just doing it once and then starting it up it can be sitting there and missing in three cylinders for around five minutes or so and usually that can be the difference to whether I make it to work on time or I hit traffic which is super super annoying now coming back to the straight pipe if you guys remember that horrible straight pipe that we had on the R33 well guess what the boys at on song actually decided to do a mad little swap with me and we have a NZ wiring trigger kit here for the RV25. Max came up the other day and he's got a customer at the moment that has a 33 Skyline and it's been doing a little bit of work to it and he needed an exhaust so I provided that horrible straight pipe that we have. Sure enough he had an NZ wiring trigger kit in stock. Now if you guys do want NZ wiring trigger kits or any automotive parts in general definitely go check out the link in the description down below. Max and Rex from Onsong Performance or Boost Gums on YouTube have helped me out more than I could imagine anyone on this entire YouTube channel and from the entire build of the RB25 to tuning it twice to doing the fuel pump to doing just a whole bunch of stuff the forward facing plenum the turbo and just making it into the 280 horsepower beast that it is today there is no one else I can thank more than them so so yes if you guys are searching for parts definitely go check out Onsong Performance massive thank you to those blokes for sponsoring today's video and uh, let's get started first of all we have to go to super cheap so we'll take this thing down to super cheap we'll go grab my tuning laptop and uh and also a surprise visitor is probably jumping on the stream in a second as well so um yeah should be pretty cool let's get into it alrighty guys so three super cheap trips later we have everything that we need to do the tree kit on the r33 i went to the first one um i work at north lakes and i need to go get my laptop so we can tune it so i headed into work i thought north lakes would have everything that i need um as it turns out they do not they didn't have a timing light well they had the 200 dollars one but i didn't really want to spend 200 bucks on a timing light especially if it's just my first one so I ended up going to North Lakes. We ended up getting some 303 interior cleaner for the R33. I've heard that stuff is pretty good, so we're gonna give it a test today. So that was the first trip. The second trip, we went and got the timing line out at Deception Bay, so that was a nice little drive all the way down there. And then I completely forgot to grab Loctite. So I had to go all the way back into Kalanga on the way back home. It was only like a five minute detour and grab a Loctite. So I'm back, almost two hours of driving later. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, that's all good. Okay, so one thing I can recommend, probably do this while the engine's cold. <laughs> I burnt myself that many times already just trying to do that. Um, so the next thing you want to do is you want to scrape off all of this gasket right here. Now the biggest thing to note, do not drop anything down in the timing color because that would not end well. You would have to take off the fans, the balancer, everything to try and fish out all these little pieces of plastic. So just make sure, I'm probably gonna take my gloves off for this, but you're just scraping all this off perfectly. And yes, <laughs> do not drop it down your timing cover. I'm probably gonna put like a piece of paper or something on the lines just down there, um, like scrunched up paper or a microfiber or something, um, just to make sure nothing goes down there. Or it may even be safer literally just to do everything with the cover off. It's only like a couple of screws, so I'm probably gonna do it that way. That way you can attach that machine plate at the front there without having to worry about any of the bolts slipping down there. And then also, you can cover up every single place where the bolts could potentially slip through from here. Um, so yeah, just be wary. All right, so now that that's all off, I'm going to cover up all of this timing area right here with a microfiber. Uh, so I'm just getting everything off my microfiber. I don't know why I placed it all on top of it. <laughs> so grabbing a microfiber, make sure there's no bits of plastic that you've cut off on it, because that would be 
detrimental. Make sure it's nice and clean, nothing's gonna fall off it. And we're gonna put it down just over all the holes and everything going into the timing case because that would not be fun. I would hate to drop anything down there today. I definitely do not want that to happen. Um, so I don't want to go out to super cheap and buy a balancer pulley because that would not be fun. So, all right, now that that's all covered up, nothing can get down there. Uh, we're going to be removing all four of these bolts because this little trigger wheel, I'll quickly show, I probably should have showed you everything that came in the kit. Because this wheel right here is now going to be sitting uh, where that washer is. It's just going to be sitting in its place. So, so now what we're going to do, uh, yeah, we're going to loosen off all four of these and we're going to be installing this new wheel. You know what's awesome to note is the fact that everywhere here is dry. This is, I think, the first time I've ever pulled the timing cover off and there's been no oil from that cam gear. So it goes to show, when you actually use Loctite and everything stays in place, and these four little bolts actually stay on, sometimes your oil pressure kind of like stays, which is impressive. So now we don't want to lose the plate. Everything is very hot. Don't drop anything. Beautiful. So you guys can see there is a key there, like a keyway. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be placing this trigger wheel right here, directly under the front there, using those four bolts. So we've just got this medium strength thread locker, so this should hold everything in place. That's what I'm running on the uh, front cover there. So just put a little bit on each one of those four bolts and we'll bolt it up. Okay, so now they're all done up to 18 Newton meters, we can get to work on the front cover. So as I said before, this front cover needs the gasket removed around the outside, so let's quickly do that. Should be fairly straightforward. So the gasket on my timing case basically just broke apart the exact same as what Samets did. So yeah, we're gonna put this back on right now, and then we can start measuring some tolerances between the sensor and the wheel. Um, so yeah, let's get to putting this back on, and um, yeah, almost there. All right, so sorry the camera just died, I don't know why. It was very random. Anyway, we have the timing cover on and also the machine faceplate, which houses the sensor. So now what we can do is we just wanna double check to see whether we need shims. Now, I personally don't have any shims because this was just a secondhand kit um, that Onsong had lying around. Um, but luckily enough, I do not need any shims. The actual kit itself comes with a fair few shims if you do need it. So what you need to do is put the sensor in. Uh, this is the way that Sam sort of described it. Um, on some performance do sort of like, they actually physically measure the depth of it. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I do have a set of calipers here, but I don't have any shims. And also, if you guys can see, when we push it in all the way, there is absolutely no gap whatsoever in there. And the sensor moves completely fine in there. We're not pressing up against anything. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to tighten that up. And then the next thing we're gonna do is literally just plug it straight in. And then we can start on the Link ECU and setting up all the settings for the trigger kit. So I'm gonna quickly finish off these two little things here and uh, get the laptop set up. laptop all connected up in the car and um, I'm just going through the link software just to make sure that I'm having every just make sure I got everything sorted um, so I'll quickly run you guys through the base settings that uh, NZ wiring actually sends you to set up in the link uh, everything is on all of these settings for I believe link Haltech and a few others are all the settings or the, the base settings are all there ready to go um, on on their instructions so definitely go check them out um, but if we quickly scroll across um, we've changed the trigger setup now to multi-tooth missing and the RPM, RPM filtering I believe it was one which is default anyway um, so now if we jump across so our trigger one settings uh, is now a is a reluctor um, cam one low 
Oh, level one low. Uh, the multi position we are changing now to cam. Uh, cam count on these is 24 with one missing tooth. Um, and then number of gaps one, uh, sink tooth one. And then we changed our, our trigger one aiming threshold, there's just the voltage, um, to 0 0.2, 1, 2, 3. And then from 4000 onwards is all 3.5. And our trigger two setup, um, make sure to change your sink mode to none. Uh, uh, silver Lacta with uh, level one low and then if we jump across to our configuration uh, which should be somewhere along here uh, our calibration right here um, our trigger offset you have to change now to 98 and one thing we did learn also in Sam's video because by default this is zero when you change it to 98 you have to type it into 98 and press enter uh, so that way it actually stores it so now we have 98 10 and then you click Control S, and that's going to store it to the ECU. We'll do it one more time just to make sure. Um, so now, before I do anything, I'm going to let Sam check over those settings. I'm going to learn how to read a timing light because I've never done that before. Um, <laughs> this should be a lot of fun. In theory, the car's ready to start up and ready to go, um, but I just want to be 100% sure, make sure I'm not going to do anything stupid, and um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So yeah, let's do it. All right, yeah, guys. So we're just about to do the first startup. Hopefully, with no trigger errors whatsoever. We got Mr. Sam on the phone all the way from Japan. Like <laughs> <laughs> and that's getting muted. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, we're just about to set it up for the first time. Uh, Sam is most likely just going to retard the timing on D cell, like he did last time in my street. Um, <laughs> But no, he's just changing up the trigger setup at the moment, and um, yeah, fingers crossed all of my settings were correct. And I'll set you guys up there so I can sort of work out what I'm doing with the timing and trying to read the everything and the thingy, the thing, and the thing. So yeah, I, this is my first time doing this, so I hope Sam is okay with that. <laughs> Alrighty, hey, uh, I'm, I'm extremely interested to see how this goes. Alright, are you ready? Alrighty, hey. Right, yeah, guys, so this angle is probably going to make me look huge because um, it's wide angle. <laughs> but anyway, so it's currently the next day. And uh, yeah, picking up from where we left off yesterday, Sam went through my entire map. He set up the trigger kit. And then also he found that a lot of my low end was all very conservative in terms of timing, um, all sitting around like eight and nine, between the 900 to 1500 RPM range. Um, he found that it was all very, very conservative. So um, he beefed up the timing basically on that whole map. Um, and we haven't had a chance to take it out for a drive just yet. So this is gonna be a very interesting drive. Um, I started up the car this morning, no cold start errors whatsoever. This thing, basically, it's it's just one time, usually I have to prime it three times, but this time here. Starts up, catches idle, no worries at all. It is so perfect. So now, you guys will see in tomorrow's video just how much work we've done to this car over the past couple of uh, past couple of days. Um, but we're going to take it out for its first test drive. So already, even just backing out the garage, you can feel it just has a little bit more oomph to it. Like it's nothing crazy, it's just a little bit. Already, you can feel like ah, oh, my speedos, my speedos conked out again. God damn it. <laughs> Already you can feel just how different this car is. Like low end torque, it catches idle nicely, and it's so smooth. The sound of it's even different. Like it doesn't sound as rough anymore. It sounds like, it sounds smooth. Everything sounds like it's just doing its job. And oh man, this is interesting. That's like, that's too 
too much of a difference for a single part. Let's see if it's fixed my return to idle. It is 100% fixed. Well, I mean, I do need to drive it around for a little bit, but usually when I just clutch in at like two and a half thousand RPM, it would go around, it would hunt around for a little bit. Sometimes it'd die, sometimes it won't. But this just dropped straight down to a thousand RPM and held it, no worries at all. I can feel exactly what Sam was saying at how the low end was really boggy on this car. It's he's certainly like by advancing the timing, he certainly picked up all of that. Oh, oh man, that is, he certainly just picked up so much torque. And this car now is like, it revs so incredibly freely. Just with the new exhaust, how smooth it is, and the trigger kit, and just everything else that goes along with it. This is the smoothest 33 I've ever been in. And that is, that is really saying something. I've been in some nice 33s. There you go, so the NZ wiring trigger kit, uh, I would say has fixed, or is has most likely fixed all of the issues that I've ever had in terms of revving, in terms of cold start, in terms of trigger errors, just in terms of everything. After checking over spark plugs and injectors and coil packs and everything along those lines, checking all the wiring, nothing has been an issue apart from that cars right there. And so getting rid of that, and bringing this car into the 21st century is like, it's night and day. If you guys don't have a trigger kit, please, it is so easy to install. Someone that couldn't read timing at the start of the day um, has managed to install it. <laughs> so massive thank you to Ong Song Performance as well for sponsoring me in this video. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.